Hello there, once again, this is Anton from Antonimo Bay. Thank you once again for joining me in the collection room. <clears throat> Today, I have a little comic book haul. Just a little stack of books here that I picked up at uh, a new store here in town. Uh, it wasn't really a comic book store, it's kind of just a collectible shop, and they had a few bins of comics. And anytime I see like some old commandy stuff, uh, I'll grab that. And this is, <clears throat> I think it was 12 issues. What was it? That's the start of a page. I, that's weird. A uh, topless woman, topless boy, a red lady, uh, two dogs in hats, Sherlock Holmes, three dogs in hats. Uh, weird. This is a, this is a weird, weird opening page. Anyway, uh, like I was saying before I was distracted by that strange page, um, this is like 12 comics that was, uh, I think I paid $16 for. Um, he had them $2 a piece or six for 10. And then he had them 20% off that day. So you do the math. He ended up charging me 16 bucks for it. And after the last time I looked at, uh, Jack Kirby's work in Commandy, I was so impressed that I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to get any issue I see. Uh, there was more issues of it, of course, than I could afford. But I did grab this one. <clears throat> Some of them were very, very rough. And the next time I go back, I will definitely look for more of them. Because uh, it is one of the more interesting characters. and definitely looks to a comic. Um, it just has cool stuff going on. So I'm... I'm all about that. I'm going to kind of try and keep the pace on some of these because there is, there's a few to get through. <clears throat> and yet, um, I don't want to skip over them. So it looks like this is getting pretty faded. The colors have really started to bleed together. Uh, the return of Omak, the Mohawk Man. I don't think that's actually his name, but... Um, interesting enough, these were, <clears throat> just got to clear that out. These were not bagged or boarded. They were just in a big bin. And that makes me wonder if this has not been bagged and boarded in its whole life, which this comic is from 1978. So it's a pretty good looking book for 1978 for never being bagged and boarded. Take that under advisement. Oh, I didn't see this cover was missing a corner. Oh, dang it. Oh, well, doesn't really matter. It's a uh, Marvel 2-in-1, The Thing vs. Moondragon. Pretty sure I have owned this issue before. Um, and I, I just grabbed it because I, I do like The Thing, and I like this Sue and this wall of stuff. I really hate Moondragon, though. Like, uh, easily one of my least favorite uh, characters in the whole space universe. Um, it also features appearance by Starhawk, who was one of my one of the more interesting characters from... Uh, the real Guardians of the Galaxy. Once again, these pages are quite faded. Sometimes I talk about uh, how the crisp it looks, how uh, the book hasn't faded with time. And this, the ink has, has given up the ghost and it starts to fade, especially the color stuff. And so whenever I see an older comic that hasn't done that. And the thing is, I've seen books do this uh, inside a bag or, or outside, it doesn't really matter. Stupid moon dragon. Yeah, that's what you get. You need it. Ben Graham's just gonna swat your ass because you suck. She is. She's awful. She like murdered her dad, and then like even though he's like disabled from it and like has mental disorder, she's still terrible to him. And yeah, she's just. I don't know if she counts as a villain, villain, but in my book, she is definitely one of the more awful characters within the Marvel universe total. Um, I did pick up her figure, but only because I really hate her. Anyway, it's decent art, it's decent stuff. I need to look at the years when I open these up. This is 1980. This one's a little bit newer. This DC has held up a lot better. Maybe it hasn't been read as many times. <clears throat> it's not a burn. Uh, Marvel Team-Up, another one. I didn't realize these were all Marvel Team-Ups. I just was seeing the characters on the front going, oh, that's cool. Uh, this one is 1981. And I grabbed it because it had Dazzler on the cover. And I do love uh, 70s and 80s Dazzler. It was a, They were just so quirky. And 
I mean, it was she wasn't in a team. She was just a disco lady, and I don't know, I had a lot of fun. These are some wacky shaped uh, panels. I appreciate that. Always love it when they get a little crazy on you like that. Super Slurpee fun game. Thanks, Spidey. Uh, still not a normal shaped panel, and I'm down with that. For some reason, the ads are really catching my eye in this book. A couple of normal shaped panels, but nothing, nothing too crazy. This just looks like good. Oh, Paladin. Why has it got Paladin in it? And how is it that I had not heard of, I, hadn't, I never even heard of Paladin. I never came across him once in the Marvel Universe until I saw his Marvel Legends figure. Then he like started showing up occasionally in comics, even in the past. And I was like, who are you? I've never heard of you. Genuine Diamond Earrings for five bucks. That's probably true. You could totally do that. This was a rough, this book was in rough shape. I need to be a little more careful when I look at this uh, condition of this guy's stuff. I'm not, not that I care. It's just gonna, it's not gonna get bagged or boarded. It's just gonna go in with the rest of my books. But uh, <clears throat> Marvel Super Heroes 99, this is 19, what is this? It's gonna be 81, the year of my birth. That's what you should, you should always sneak up on the Hulk with a pile of guns. So is this dumb Hulk? I guess, yeah, it seems like he's talking a lot for like dumb Hulk. I thought Hulk usually, I thought only like a uh, scientist Hulk, smart Hulk. I thought he was the only one who ever like talked this much. Nope, it's dumb Hulk. Drops his A's, always after Hulk. Whoa. Very, very standard panels, kind of on the boring side. Green haired lady. Oh, it's Lorna. It's Polaris and Alex Havoc. Okay. Uh, so it's people I know. I was like, who are these? And of course, they're going to torque him off because that's, that's what the X-Men do whenever they run into somebody that they don't know or that's dangerous. Let's immediately use our weak powers and piss them off and then try to ask for an apology after we, you know, anger the, the force of nature that is the Hulk. Human computer snack cakes. Who, what, why is he, oh, cool, he's wearing a gun. I thought that was a severed human arm for a minute. It's actually attached. Cash prizes. Okay, so I saw this uh, issue of Betty number one and I was like, really? Betty number one, and that's a weird cover and everything. Now, when I purged a bunch recently, I got rid of all of my Archie comics, so I don't have any Archies left. This is the only Archie comic I have. Now, this is 1992, so obviously this is going to be 90s Betty, which uh, was arguably one of the hotter Bettys. Like, I know, like, uh, 60s Betty was, was very, very attractive, but wow. So I've, I've mentioned recently to somebody, I can't remember who, that uh, Archie has this like reputation for wholesomeness that I don't know is entirely earned. Um, I mean, it's, it's a long-standing book. It was uh, clear back in the 60s, I think probably even in the 50s, clear to current. Um, and it always kind of gets this pass as being really wholesome. And I'm, I kind of, I kind of have my doubts on some of that, uh, as far as how wholesome Archie actually was. There's been quite a few stuff that I've come across the years that, not just the art style, but um, or the way that they, they draw the girls, but uh, some of the story too. It's like mm, that's it's pretty sus, guys. I don't know how uh, how wholesome this was actually actually was. 
I, 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 I cast doubt. Anyway, um, like I said, I purged my collection of all my... I had so many Archies, so many Betty and Veronica books and stuff like that. Purged it out all, but... And don't really miss it. But I did see this one, which I have never had, and I just thought, you know what? I ought to grab that. So I did. Betty number one. Uh, another DC book, we got Mask number four, which, I mean, I knew there was a Mask comic, but I never owned any, I don't think. <clears throat> so I'll be honest, I cannot remember much about Mask at all. I used to think it was awesome. Um, I know Matt Tracker, and I had some of the toys. But, like, I don't remember the show. I don't remember the, anything with the cartoon. Which I know I watched because I used to have a backpack with Mask. And that was, like, my school book bag. And I thought it was the coolest thing. And I could never get the cool vehicles. All I could get was, the, like, the little motorcycles. There was, like, a purple motorcycle with a sidecar. And then it was the green motorcycle with the helicopter. And those are the only two I ever had growing up. Um, I did get a Matt Tracker and his car way, way later in life. Uh, but that's the only things I've ever gotten. I never never found this guy, this hot rod. I never got the, the semi. That was the one I really wanted. Uh, when your dad drives trucks when you're little, that's the thing that always gets you is the coolness of semis. Anyway, I never got it. But, looks like a decent enough comic. I'm not really following. But it is what it is. That's what I got. Booster Gold. Gold Voltron Force. Um, I came across a Charleston book. And I don't see Charleston books very often. Period. And then this was Billy the Kid. And since I live in uh, Alamogordo, New Mexico, uh, Lincoln, New Mexico, where Billy the Kid is from, uh, it's only about an hour drive, maybe, maybe, maybe a little less. I, I don't know, it's about an hour. Um, we've got museums, we've got the places. There's still plenty of buildings in this, in this area that uh, are historical marks because he either robbed them or shot the place up. Um, of course, he, he raised some hell in Tula Rosa which is only like uh, five miles from here, five, 10 miles, something like that. So yeah, when they saw a Billy the Kid comic, he's kind of a notorious character in this neighborhood. So couldn't pass on that. Thought I better grab those. Uh, I don't normally pick up Western comics, period. Like I am not a Western comic guy, but these just seem like the thing to get. So I did. Let me take a look at him. Yeah, like I said, I'm not a big Western guy. Just something about the era was not my not my cup of tea. So it is kind of weird that I live in such a highly cowboy area. Yeah, they do draw him a little, a little oddly. It's not ever what I think of Billy the Kid looking like. Not even with uh, Emilio Estevez. I guess we got so many pictures around here of like the real Billy the Kid that these don't, these just seem a little odd, a little out of place. The Outlaw's Lair. This book feels a little rough, but uh, it's even less faded than a lot of these. And this is uh, June 1976. It's a pretty good age on that one. Um, looking for a cover price. Uh, 30 cents up there in the Charleston logo. This one is a little bit older, I'm guessing, because it's 20 cents. And a lower issue. And you got a big old comic called Authority up in there in the corner. This is 1973. Okay, these buildings, these are everywhere here. Look out, amigo. I was just wondering if they were going to give, like, town names. I'll bet you they do. Which is funny because, like, I would probably know most of these town names. Uh, like I said, he was all over around here. Now, 
and you'll see like if you ever if you read a bunch of the names like uh, Tunstall or McSwain or names like that, even Chavez, uh, these names are still around in this area. There's still uh, there's still stores with Tunstall name attached to them um, that are still in the family. Um, there's still you'll find people with the name Chavez uh, still around. So I mean, and that's that's descendants of of those people, those characters. So it's kind of crazy living in a place where all this stuff actually happened because it's just right around. And I know people who just spend their days out in the desert with metal detectors looking for old guns lost in gunfights, and sometimes they find them because Alamo here is a big open desert area and it's the small area that has water in it. So anything that happened happened around in these areas. So even though it could be a hundred years ago, there's still, they'll find evidence of stuff. It's pretty cool. That's just, that's my, that's my town. And then what do we got here? We got Eric, Son of Thunder. I had to get both of these because like, they're both so similar. He's hauling like a dead woman. And I was like, well, that's just crazy. You got two issues of you hauling a dead woman. What are the odds? The only difference is one is this cool like green chick with wings, which I did not notice she has wings on the cover, but she does. And I got some Arak covers um, from a previous comic book haul. And the thing I noticed was that they weren't that interesting inside. Like the, the Commandy books were way cooler. But uh, these just had really great covers and I thought, you know what, I'll give them another chance. I'll grab some Arak to see kind of what they look like in there. And they're still, these are still pretty boring. I'm not gonna lie. These are not intriguing me very much at all. So Arak, uh, Son of Thunder, uh, gets an A for covers, or probably a B for uh, panel layouts and stuff like that. It's just, it's very small. It's kind of boring. It doesn't really pop like like some of the older, or some of the other books do. Especially the Barbarian era. Valda, the Iron Maiden. Nice picture. Pin up. The BMX experience. Anyway, I thought she looked like She-Hulk, so I grabbed it. Uh, we got Eric, Son of Thunder, number 30. What year? 1983, so I'd have been two. This was still a thing. Yikes, I thought he was stabbing that fawn for a second. I guess he was just getting ready to stab the fawn. Hadn't killed him yet. Um, so when it comes to barbarian books, it's kind of hard to, to run this, uh, to ride the fence on it. Uh, Conan, I, I never liked Conan just because he's such an unlikable character. I don't know. I just I could never stand him. But some barbarians have this, like, I don't know. They're not quite as, uh, what's the phrase? Belligerent, bullyish, um, cold, masochistic, um, chauvinistic. They're not all quite that bad. I oh mean, I sound like a liberal. But, uh, no, just, just some of them hit this, like, middle ground where they're not quite as unbearable alpha males as as like Conan. And so Conan was always a hard read for me just because they're so like whatever the whatever the version of a the man version of like a bad girl, that's what that's what he is. Just over the top, ridiculous. Like I can't I can't take it seriously. I don't know where Arak Arak falls into that. But I do got a pretty good idea where uh the warlord falls into that. He is got some western sensibilities to him so he's not like a total savage uh i don't know ridiculous he-man woman hater raping pillaging guy because he's he's like from earth he's just in a in a place like this so i always thought he he struck the balance a lot better and probably is one of my favorite of the barbarian titles and characters and it has touches of sci-fi in it too, just because of the time travel element. The fact that he carries a pistol, 
stuff like that. And I felt like DC did a much better job with the Warlord books than with the Air Act books. Um, I think they did way better. I don't know if you count Commandy as like a, uh, a barbarian title, but it gives me the same vibe as this, and I dig it, so... My god, demons. I just never really understood his, like, really... Well, maybe that, maybe it's his beard and his mustache is what gave him that air of civility. He wasn't just a complete bloodthirsty uh, crognard. Anyway, our last book, the last book. Um, is Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld, number one. I know I picked this up recently, uh, but this copy was in pretty good shape, and I just wanted to grab it. And I was just like, yeah. Not that I need another issue of it, probably, but I, I did want it, and it looked good, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to round out the, uh, the number of books, and we'll grab that. Bubble Young. So if I flipped through this one recently, um, I apologize. I know I picked it up, but I don't remember if I flipped through it or if I went page by page or not. I, I know it's one that I wanted. I know it was in a haul video, but uh, it's one I just felt like I should grab. Looks pretty good. Oh, I should have looked at the year. 1983. Wait, 83 was like a good year for barbarian books. I'll bet you this is around the time He-Man probably came out. And we couldn't make our barbarian books fast enough. We just had to get on board. That's a weird looking dude. Dude, gives me the fear. Karate Kung Fu. The multi-handed man-woman. You gotta remember, uh, she is a little girl in the real world who goes to a magical land where she becomes a warrior princess woman. It is a weird, weird book. One that I like very much. Beautiful art in it. Um, that is my haul. I'm not sure which of these covers I like the best. Um, gosh, you know what's probably that commandy cover. I love, well, I love that Betty cover. It's hard to tell. We'll just leave it with that. That is my haul. Thank you guys for sticking through it. That was a long one. Uh, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, thank you very much. I do expect a thumbs up for that though. Or if you want to complain that I make the video too long, uh, leave a comment. That'd be awesome. And I'll be for sure to not do that again. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. That's my story, and I will catch you guys later.